Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our September edition of Start With Safety. I'm Nicole Rilke, and I am over the Traffic Safety Program here at Utah Safety Council. As always, our mission here at the Utah Safety Council is to save lives by promoting safety and health through education, services, and products. The beginning of of each month, we present a Start With Safety webinar, which is free to all of you, which are our members. Um, each month, we will discuss safety topics that directly impact Utah businesses and companies. So September is a special month where we highlight Child Passenger Safety Week from September 19th through the 25th. And we will be doing free car seat checks this week that week, I mean, um, but we also wanted to recognize occupant protection for all motorists and passengers. Seatbelt safety is important to all motorists on the roadway, and chances are this year, someone you know will be involved in a car accident. If they are unbuckled, that person is 45% more likely to be injured or killed. Remember, mandatory seatbelt usage is the number, way, number one way to reduce your risk of serious injury. Today, I have the honor of introducing Rick Howard. Rick will be talking to us today about the effects traffic accidents have on the body and how energy is transferred from one object to another. A quick introduction on Rick, my parrot head friend. We got into, um, he got into EMS, fire and nursing field a long time ago. Um, he has a special place in his heart for emergency medicine with emphasis in trauma. Um, it has changed so much over the years, he says, but he has worked as a charge nurse, EMT, firefighter captain, battalion chief, and instructor of all types for EMS education. Rick says, I have, some, I have some of the alphabet soup to put behind my name, but my favorite job is grandpa. He loves spending time with his grandkids. Now I will turn the time over to Rick Howard. Oh, that's great. So there's, there, oh, I gotta show this. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Okay, you're good. Got it. No, here we go. It's taking my, can you see it now? <laughs> yes, we can see it. You're All good. Right. There we go. Let's go. Hey. There's a new CD. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, I've got a quick time uh, to share some information with you that would take a couple of hours. Um, understand that the information I'm sharing with you is geared towards EMS professionals out in the field. So when I talk about that type of thing, it's important for them to understand kinetics uh, and Newton's laws, because when they come on scene, they do a 15 second windshield assessment. They've got to be able to look at the scene and try to figure out who's the sickest and and what transfer of energy and things like that happen um, to the individual. So I put this together to basically help them um, uh, understand what they're, what they're looking at because there are people uh, that wind up in car crashes that don't have real obvious uh, uh, injuries and they've got to be able to look past the obviousness uh, or the non-obviousness, if that's a phrase, and, and commit a suicide on what's going on with their patient. So trauma is trauma's a bad thing. Um, the, the, the years lost to trauma are the same years combined. Uh, if you combine cancer, heart disease, and HIV combined, uh, those are the years lost to trauma. And then a lot of unnecessary deaths are, are um, missed by low index of suspicion, which means when my guys go on scene, my guys and gals uh, go on scene, uh, and they look uh, and somebody's up walking around, but their car motor has been yanked out of the vehicle from a car crash. They've got to they've got to have a pretty good suspicion that something really bad happened. And so I, I, I put this together to help them understand some of the kinematics of trauma. And, and Newton was pretty good at this. You know, it all stemmed from a from an apple falling on his kid's head. And we're going to uh, we're going to use some of the kin kinematics and, and understand uh, some trauma. I do have some videos. They aren't blood and guts, but they are pretty dramatic. Um, most people know what Newton's laws say, uh, but they don't. Say, but a lot of them don't know what they mean, or some people simply don't believe what they mean. 
okay? So we'll go through the laws. We'll go through the first law, law of inertia, a second law, conservation law of energy uh, and kinetic energy. Now, there may be those of you out there that are the mathematic types that uh, when I use uh, mass times velocity squared, I use that loosely to help them understand the transfer of energy. I know you have to change it to kilopascals and joules, and I'm not trying to get them to understand the exact number of, of kinetic energy transfer. I just want them to get a, a, a global understanding that um, somebody hit a bridge uh, and they were going 70 miles an hour, there's gonna be a lot of energy uh, displaced and they need to understand that that's there. They don't have to understand the exact numbers. So some of you might, and I've had this happen in classes, some of you might go, well, that's not a true number because you have to transfer it over. I'm not worried about that. I want them to get a global understanding. Let's talk about the law of inertia. The law of inertia is a body stays in motion unless it's acted upon by an unbalanced force. What's an unbalanced force? Well, an unbalanced force, we, we have to understand that there are basically two forms of gravity that are working against us. How come we walk by a hole, a big hole in the ground, and all of a sudden we're not sucked into that hole because gravity pulling us down? Well, we also have upward force. That's why we don't get sucked down. We have a, a normal force that pushes, it, pushes us up and maintains our ability for us to stand on the earth. Um, and so when we fall in a hole, yeah, we'll fall until that stops, until the hole stops. We do have that normal force that keeps us why we don't float and why we don't get pushed completely to the ground. Uh, it's all balanced. So what's unbalanced? Well, here's an idea of unbalanced. So the Saturn V rocket, you think about the weight of that rocket and the rocket motors, uh, some of which may have been built up at uh, up in either Thiokol or up at Hercules, but but the power that it takes to get that, and I, I think I heard somewhere that in five seconds it was, you know, some, you know, just millions of miles per hour, I don't know, it's just going, but um, that, that fixed the unbalanced force. The balanced force, it was sitting on the ground, and it was balanced. And when that rocket motor fired, it started pushing it up and needed a lot of pressure. So we have that in the vehicles that we are riding in. Uh, and keep in mind that a body will keep doing what a body is doing. Um, and and in, in that balanced force, we're sitting in a car, we don't have a seatbelt on, we're going 80 miles an hour, and we hit a bridge. Uh, we hit another vehicle. Um, we hit, we, some reason it causes that balanced force to now be unbalanced. Now, a seat belt will keep us tied to the vehicle uh, and will help us so we don't have a lot of this unbalanced force that would, um, could cause us to have an acceleration or a deceleration type injury. Um, Remember, we will maintain the motion that we are in uh, until we have this unbalanced force. So if we're not wearing a seatbelt and we're going 80 miles an hour, we are balanced in the vehicle. If we hit a bridge or a vehicle or a truck or whatever, a Jersey barrier, it now becomes unbalanced and we will maintain that, um, maintain that movement uh, uh, unless we're acted upon by the seatbelt that would help hold us there. Watch this one. Now watch carefully. Black screen, we're doing it at night. Uh, let me get this to come in. Come on. No, you should probably be able to see it. Okay, it'll show you again in slow motion. So you saw that car, that guy's riding in a convertible, comes across, hits the Jersey barrier, obviously not wearing a seatbelt. So he's going to maintain the speed at which he's traveling, probably slowed down a little bit when I hit the Jersey barrier, but he's going to maintain that. There's nothing to hold him there. He's going to maintain that motion 
Um, and that's why it's important for our, our guys to, when they're looking at something like that, they come on scene. That guy could be standing up, walking around at scene, at the scene. We don't know that. Okay. And so it's important for us to, to idea, uh, to have an idea. Watch this one carefully. See the wreck happening. Looks like debris. So that's kind of graphic in the fact that the body is going to continue moving in the direction that it was moving um, unless there's something there to keep it tied to the vehicle. Now, a lot of people say, well, if I wore a seatbelt, eh, I would have been killed. Well, I don't know. Um, uh, if you got hit in a kill zone in your vehicle, which would be a door. So if you're sitting there and they hit right in that door, that's a kill zone. So um, if you're in a seatbelt or not in a seatbelt, depending on the intrusion, that statement might be true. But for the most part, seatbelts are, are vital. Um, we went on a call once and there was a gal, she was sitting in the passenger seat. The car was up against a big chain link fence. Uh, and she said, where's my boyfriend? And we said, did you have a boyfriend? There's nobody here. And the fence is 15 feet high. We uh, made our search and we found him. He was deceased. But we found him a hundred yards from the scene. Had he'd gone up and over the fence and it became a missile. So um, that Newton's first law is important, especially in seatbelt use. Uh, we need to keep that. We need to be tied to that vehicle, uh, which will help us when that unbalanced force occurs. Let's talk about the second law. This is important as well because um, Dale Earnhardt uh, didn't die from hitting the wall at 198 miles an hour. Uh, Dell Earnhardt uh, died because of the transfer of energy that occurred to his body, and they had a lot of good things that came came from uh, from his crash. Second law is the force acting on an object is equal to the mass of that object times its acceleration. Okay, and so I always teach mass times velocity squared divided by two. Uh, speed kills not only the not only the methamphetamine type of speed, but driving speed, uh, it kills. Uh, velocity, the size of the individual, that acceleration, that change of velocity, all that in Newton's second law um, is, is, um, is detrimental. There are two things in our body that do not react well to deceleration type injuries. That's your uh, descending thoracic aorta and your duodenum. Uh, there's a lot of other things that don't, that don't fare well, but those are the two main things. Uh, and keep in mind that the greater the mass of an object that's being accelerated, the greater the amount of force it's needed to accelerate that object, like the rocket taking off. And so when, um, uh, uh, when there's, excuse me, when there's uh, acceleration, that mass times velocity squared, uh, it's greatly magnified. And if you take it and do mass of a 150 pound person and take the velocity of 198 and square it, and then divide it by two. Dale Earnhardt didn't hit the wall at 180, 198 miles an hour. The energy transfer was millions of foot pounds of kinetic energy. Let's take that back to uh, um, you know the old uh, you know seatbelt that we used to use in the old cars when Dad would hit the brakes, he'd stick his arm out and try to stop you. 25 miles an hour. If we're going 25 miles an hour, and you have a 25 pound kid that transfer of energy to that kid uh, and trying to stop as they hit the dashboard is 10, you know, like 10,000, 60,000 uh, foot pounds of kinetic energy. So, so there, there's a lot of energy transfer that occurs and they have to understand that mass times velocity squared. They don't need to come up with a number and they don't have to have a perfect number. They just need to know that a 25 mile an hour crash can cause significant uh, significant problems as well. Newton's third law, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, we've heard that one before. So in a car crash, remember, the cars, there's cars colliding with each other. That reaction force is now sent back due to the collision. Um, and so uh, the best thing to show you is, is, of course, a video 
about that. Now, these guys are called the slow-mo guys. They took two cars and they collided them at 50 miles an hour, which would be a combined speed of 100 miles an hour. And they put fruit on the inside. So you can see the transfer of energy and, and what happens inside a car. It's, it's actually pretty interesting. Um, and watch the vehicles, watch what continues to keep moving, and then watch when the fruit uh, starts making that transfer, okay, when they, when they collide. Try and get it to work. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Let's don't play this game. Ha! Ah, I just fixed this. Oh, well. I'll have to show it to you. I'll have to find it. Let me see if I can find it. And uh, Cameron, can I get out and find it and come back in? Yeah, you you should be absolutely good if you just hit, uh, you can either just like hit the escape button and, and step out or you can even stop sharing. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. This, this is a great video. Um, I've got it right there. Uh, let me pull it up. And then how do I get it to show you? You don't see that, do you? Uh, no, you're gonna have to reshare reshare your screen, Rick. Okay, so let me see how I, ah, I can feel my time. Oh, there we go. All right, here we go. Right. <laughs> you're good. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, can you see the screen now? Yes, I, we went to another screen. You might have to click back on that tab. Let me just see your Zoom screen. You just see my Zoom screen? Yeah, when you first pulled it up, we saw the video and then, yep, there we are. There it is. Okay, so watch this. This is this is fascinating. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, look at the steam escaping from there. That was class. It was like the front of the car's burst. Did you see that? <laughs> There was a lot of debris in the air there. I can't wait to see that, mate. That were like 20 feet. That was amazing. <laughs> that is not bad. That is almost dead on. Oh, the wheel moves on the left side one. Look, the back wheels are oh, oh, the floor. Look at that melon coming out. <laughs> so the back car, look at how high off the ground the back, the right hand side car is. It's just taken off. That's great. The melons pushed loads of shards of glass. Out. Wait, so it wasn't even the crash that smashed the glass, it was the melons hitting the glass that smashed it. You would not want to be in there. No, you I'm would. glad no one was. All right, let me figure out how to go back now. Let's see. All right, all right, all right, all right. Share screen. Where are you, Cat? Let's see. Whoops, I see it now. Share screen, that one. Is that it? We're back. We up. are back, yep. Okay, so you saw you saw the crash that occurred, and and that's the important thing that that EMS has to has to think about. You you see, he made the comment, the crash didn't even break the windshield; it was the objects flying inside the vehicle. And we got to remember that that when somebody's in a car crash, they're involved in three collisions. Actually, it's whatever the car collides with, whatever the body collides with inside the car, and whatever their organs collide with inside the body. The other thing is if there are things that are loose inside the vehicle, it's there's like four things, right? Whatever those loose things collide with uh, inside the car. So um, it's important that with that third law, the law of conservation is that energy is neither created nor destroyed. It just changes. It goes from one thing to another. And those slow-mo guys really did a great job in showing, you saw that one car on the right, the wheels continued to turn. That energy was continually going. The melons flew forward. The seeds flew forward. 
And you think about a person inside there, there's not only forward energy, but there's backward energy. Um, and that energy just gets transferred to the, to the person. And so we have to think of where they were, where they were sitting, uh, what was loose inside the vehicle, if they had a seatbelt on, if they didn't have a seatbelt on, okay? So there's that kinetic energy, mass, half mass and object times velocity squared or mass times velocity squared divided by two, the same thing. Um, so it's, it's, it's vital to realize that those, that energy from the outside forces acts upon the body. And then of course the speeds. I mean, there was a, somebody was killed yesterday or the day before in a semi crash. Uh, and it looked like he might have hit the back end of another semi. Energy transfer, uh, speed transfer to the body, things of that nature, okay? Uh, this is Dale Earnhardt's crash, and I'll just show it to you real quick. Every driver dreams of winning the Daytona 500. Michael Walter dreams just of winning. This way, any race, to break that big 0 for streak, 0 for 462. You'll watch, you'll watch when he hits the wall, there's another car that hits him from the side. So Michael Waltrip's in the front, Dale Earnhardt's back behind, and Dale Jr.'s right there. His son was behind him. Is there room between Earnhardt and Schrader? Yes, he gets to the outside. Earnhardt's back in line. All right, here we go. Now this is when it's going to get tense. This is when we're going to find out. We're coming around to the white flag. Four Chevys, a Pontiac, a Ford, and a Dodge. To fight it out. There's Dale Earnhardt. So he's three, third car back. The Daytona 500. If he can survive this run, he'll be okay. Do anything, all Come on, buddy. One to go. The last lap. Last lap at the Daytona 500. Keep it Keep You know, watch back here. You got him, Mikey. You got him, man. You got him. Come on, man. Come on, man. Get Okay, there's the rat. Come on, Mikey. You got it. You got it. Dale was in that wreck. I mean, he'd been in wrecks like that before, but he was hit. He hit the wall, and then that car hit him from the side, so there was rotational forces. There was frontal forces, and there's a lot of good things that came out of that um, from the car crash. So again, impacts occur to the vehicle, the occupant, the occupant's organs. Um, so watch this real quick. This is a good one. This one will this one will scare you. Okay, there's no way to brace for that there's no way you know to prepare yourself so in that type of collision the vehicle stops the occupants continue forward they either go down and under or up and over if they're not wearing your seat belt uh things are pushed into them and so um those head-on collisions are 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 pretty fantastic um and pelvic injuries cause a problem rear end collisions same thing if we have a rear end collision we got to worry about the energy transfer we not only have an acceleration type injury as the car goes for, forward fast, but a deceleration as it slows down, okay? Uh, lateral collisions, like what Dale Earnhardt was hitting a frontal collision, then also a lateral collision. Um, that's when we start having shearing type injuries as the body kind of rotates and twists. It's not designed to do that, um, the rotational. Let me show you uh, this one real quick. Watch the cars over here on the side. You'll see a car coming through and a, and a vehicle will get hit from the back. Okay. So see how it gets hit. And we wonder how that car gets tipped on its side. Car ran a red light, uh, hit the back corner of it. That causes a lateral type injury and a rotational type injury. And all that it has that all that injury and stuff has effect on the body. Okay. And so staying with the vehicle is vital. A lot of people go out those sunroofs. 
Uh, staying with the vehicle is important. Here's a rollover. No seatbelt. You can see no seatbelt. He's sleeping, falling asleep. Amazingly enough, he's got a Dell Earnhardt shirt on. Okay. So we have to figure out, did he start in the back seat or is that where he wound up? Was there other people driving um, in that rollover? Because you don't know where they'll wind up. And a lot of times they don't wind up in the vehicle. Um, they're, they're thrown out of the vehicle. So um, let me get down here um, just to kind of um, finish up for you. Okay. So significant uh, mechanism of injury is important body falls, you know, twice the body height, that's significant. Uh, thrown 10 or 15 feet, that's significant. Somebody who's been killed in the same motor vehicle crash, that's significant. Those are all the things that we look at as we're assessing our patients. But again, we have to look at uh, Newton's laws on, the, on, on what happened to the vehicle and where they were in the vehicle and if they had seatbelts on or if they didn't have seatbelts on. Uh, think, about the, think about the mechanism. Um, Look what happened. Always have a good index of suspicion that's increased. So you have a good idea, but knowing those, Newton, those three laws, Newton's laws and how they affect the body, that's important for us to, um, uh, to get good patient care. And it's important for your people to understand that seatbelt use does save lives and, and not, not modified under your arm, but the actual three-point harness. I mean, if we could do five-point harness in a vehicle, that'd be, uh, that'd be great. But that's what I've got for you. My time's up, uh, and and I appreciate uh, I appreciate the opportunity to share those that with you. Sorry about the little video glitch. Hey, that's technology for you these days, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it happens. So, um, thank you so much, Rick, for this eye-opening presentation. Um, I hope people will leave this webinar with a new appreciation for seatbelt safety and education on why it's so important to wear your seatbelt correctly. Um, thank you so much for your time. Um, now I will turn the time over to Cameron Clark for program updates. Okay. All right. Well, hello, everyone. <clears throat> for those of you that don't know me, my name is Cameron Clark. I do the occupational safety training program here. So if you're working on your safety certificates or any of those other elements, I'll be the guy that will be helping you out with that. I just have my calendar that I wanted to share with everybody for this month. Um, today we have our fire protection class going on, so if you missed that one, sorry, I'll get you into the next one. Uh, we also have an OSHA 10 construction safety coming up tomorrow uh, and Friday. So if you if you have some people that need to get in through their OSHA 10, uh, you haven't used your member benefit, now is a really great time to take, a, take that, that opportunity and, and get them in here. Uh, we have an ergonomics course coming up on the 9th. Um, and then we also, that one's going to be part of the advanced safety certificate. We also have the welding, cutting, brazing. Uh, so if you're doing any of the cutting operations, anything like that with your uh, facility, that's a great class to get in. It's going to go over uh, regulations, expectations, um, and, and navigating uh, the OSHA standards within welding, cutting, and brazing. That one's on the 13th. Uh, we have job safety analysis on the 14th. Uh, so going through writing our JSAs, building JSAs, what we need to have in them. Um, so if you're working on that element within your organization, Definitely a great course to get into. All of these courses that I've listed, um, other than our OSHA 10, uh, can be attended virtually. So we, we offer them all as hybrid. Um, so if, if it's one of those where you're going, oh, that might be useful for us, but I don't know if I'm gonna step away from the office. Uh, great opportunity to sign up for that. It'll be uh, on the website, different, just differentiates itself as web-based or in-person. So kind of depending on your preference, and I always like to check in uh, with everybody before the class too, just to make sure they weren't going, oh, I, I meant web-based or you know, vice versa. So um, the other one that we've got coming up, on the 15th, we have reasonable suspicion for DOT supervisor. Uh, so going over um, suspicion, policy, implementation, drug testing, kind of those elements uh, for supervisors. A lot of the question that comes up often is, is this only for DOT supervisors? Um, obviously, when we're, it's going to go over a lot of uh, drug testing policy, what needs to be in place, um, what procedures need to be in place, and what needs to be followed uh, with any sort of drug testing policies. So it's also going to go over kind of just recognition, uh, some of those other elements as well. That's about a two-hour course, so definitely a good one uh, for anybody really that is working with a workforce. Uh, so <clears throat> the, the next one we've got is team safety. Um, and then we have slips, trips, and falls, again, part of our OSHA compliance certificate. And then we have one of our four-day classes coming up this month uh, from the 21st to the 24th is safety management techniques. So that's one of the, the four-day courses that's within our advanced safety certificate. Um, it's going to really focus on um, 
you as a safety manager, um, really implementing safety programs into an organization, uh, a lot of those elements, and then it's all very specifically tailored uh, to, your, to your needs as you work through that program. Um, we do partner with the Mountain West OSHA as well, and they're actually offering an introduction to OSHA on the 27th. Uh, it's just kind of a brief course, letting people under, know what OSHA does, uh, what resources they really have available, um, and you know, and why why they are a governing party that we use in the workforce. Um, and then we we're wrapping up the month here with our forklift trainer course. Uh, so this is a train the trainer course. Uh, if you have any operators that are that you want to get to where they can certify people in-house to operate forklifts. This is a great course that uses the coaching systems curriculum. Um, and it's, it's about a four and a half to six hour course, um, just kind of depending on, on group discussion, whether we're doing that all virtual or in person. Um, so if you have any questions or anything, please reach out to me. Uh, I'm going to hand things over to Kenzie and thank you. Awesome. So I'm Kenzie. I'm the emergency care program manager, and we have our um, first aid CPR AED course coming up on September 20th. This is one that qualifies for your member benefit. So if you haven't used it yet, uh, you can use that and register for free for that course. We have a community CPR AED class on the 18th and then our instructor course. So this one is almost full again. Our next one after this won't be until January. So if you are considering it, uh, I would choose quickly if you want to register for that before those spots completely uh, fill up. We also do offer first aid kits here at the Utah Safety Council. Sometimes companies don't realize that they can get kits through us for, you know, company use or home use. So we do offer those. And if you are interested in one or seeing what ours look like, go ahead and reach out to me. Um, my contact information is there on the screen. And next we'll hear from Megan. Hey, hi everybody. My name's Megan. I'm the manager of the MSHAM Refinery Training Program. I'm just gonna wait for my slide to come up. There we go. Thank you, Cameron. Um, so I uh, just, of course, um, wanted to go over uh, what we have for the refinery and MSHA training uh, that's coming up for September. Um, for refinery training, uh, we do have our basic orientation plus classes, of course. Uh, we have one coming up on, uh, uh, we have them on Tuesday, so Tuesday, September 14th and the 28th. Um, and that is for if you're going to be working over at the um, the Holly Refinery is who requires a basic orientation plus. If you've had basic orientation plus before and need to refresh of course, we do offer that in our computer lab, um, and we offer that a little bit more often. Um, it doesn't take an instructor, and so it's just a little bit shorter and a little bit easier to get in. Uh, so we do offer that uh, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and alternating Thursdays and Fridays. We're trying to open it up a little bit more to uh, make it easy to fit into everybody's different schedules. Um, just go ahead and give us a call if you want to set up anything in the computer lab, basic orientation plus refresher, or any sort of um, uh, site-specific training or anything like that. Um, of course, we also do uh, still offer UITC, which is required by Big West, Chevron, Silver Eagle. Um, and uh, we are offering that on September 7th and the 21st. And then of course, um, those site-specific classes are, uh, so we have to have a proctor in the lab for the basic orientation plus refresher. So it's only, only on those specific days. But if you're only looking for some site-specific training, then that is available Monday through Friday. Okay, and then um, for MSHA, um, as you may be able to tell, um, I am actually working from home today. Um, so it's one of the great things about being virtual, which um, all of our um, MSHA training pretty much right now is virtual. So we have been having a lot of people taking these courses from home. Um, actually, our last uh, MSHA refresher class here this last Monday, over half of our students were from out of state. Um, so we had um, about uh, 15 or so people from Utah and the other 15 or so were from, you know, Texas, California, Nevada. Um, some were from Colorado, some were from back east. So we're, we're getting a really great showing from all over the United States um, for our web-based MSHA program. And um, of course, remember that, that, that our training plan is actually accepted all across the United States also. So don't be afraid to uh, register any of your employees or any of your teammates that are anywhere in the U.S. or really anywhere in the world. We've had people take it uh, from Canada, from India, um, from Alaska, from all over the from all over the world um, taking these classes and they're all able to use the certificates wherever they're going. So we're very proud of that. Uh, we do have a web-based um, surface refresher on Wednesday, September 8th. We usually have them on Mondays, but because of Labor Day, we actually moved it back to Wednesday for you. Um, and then of course we have it on Monday, September 20th and 27th. We are 
are starting to introduce a little bit more in-person classes again. So if you are interested in the in-person class, if you're in the area and you prefer that, we do have an in-person MSHA eight-hour surface refresher on Monday, September 23rd. Uh, so um, we do offer underground classes once a quarter. So uh, that is coming up this month. So we do have the underground annual refresher on Friday, September 10th. So uh, that's not this Friday, but next Friday. Um, our next underground classes aren't going to be until December. So if you do need those underground classes, be sure to sign up for them this month if you uh, can't wait. And then of course we have our underground new minor uh, September 8th through the 11th and our MSHA 24 hour surface new minor the 8th through the 10th. And keep in mind that those um, underground new minor and our first uh, surface new minor class, the eighth, the classes, the eighth through the 10th and the eighth through 11th, those are actually filling up really fast. We actually only have seven seats left to open for that. So especially if you want the underground new minor, um, sign up for that quickly because uh, we're going to run out of seats for that really fast. And then uh, for the 24 hour surface new minor, um, we have another class on September 20th, 22nd through the 24th. Um, just keep in mind that for that surface new minor class, you do need the introduction to work environment tour. So of course we are going to be offering uh, two of those this month also on September 11th and then also again on September 25th. Um, if you have any questions about any of these programs, if you would like to set up something, a private class, either web-based or in-person, our location or yours, whichever you prefer, we're very flexible and we're always um, happy to help our members um, get exactly what they need. Um, my contact information is there on the screen. Please reach out to me and I'll be happy to help. So next we are going to hand it over to Nicole Rilke for driver safety. Thank you, Megan. <laughs> So for my updates, um, I guess just on August 13th, I was, <clears throat> sorry, I'm fighting a cold too. Um, on August 13th, I was very honored to award four deserving companies with our Occupational Seatbelt Award. Again, those of you that are not involved in our Occupational Seatbelt Award program, each year, we encourage companies to adopt and promote traffic safety for their employees by implementing a seatbelt safety program. And companies that achieve a 100% safety seatbelt usage rate during their 30-day observation period win a fancy award. This year, we awarded Hudson Printing and uh, Intermountain Healthcare Careers of St. George and Intermountain Healthcare Careers of Salt Lake and North America Industrial Services. Um, and then we also had Salt Lake City Department of Airports receive the most improved. They went from a 67% usage to a 79%. So we are excited for next year and hope to see more companies either win awards or improve their seatbelt usage. Um, <clears throat> so right now I want you to ask yourself, are you, and your employees, um, are you defensive drivers? Um, if you're not, you need to schedule uh, your next safety meeting with us so we can get you trained. Um, let's get your employees trained. So um, email me at nrilk at utahsafetycouncil.org and we can get that scheduled for you. Um, now I will turn the time over to Lisa. Awesome. Thank you, Nicole. Um, and thank you, Nicole, for arranging Rick. And thank you, Rick, um, for coming and talking to us. I was saying I challenge anyone to kind of watch that presentation without having some type of reaction. Um, I know that uh, I'm super grateful for um, the resources that we have to help keep our, keep us safe and uh, to help us keep others safe around us. So as um, safety managers, we kind of have a unique opportunity to, to help our employees and to educate them. Um, and so we'll talk about some resources that we have uh, to kind of help with that um, when it comes to occupant protection here in just a minute. So what I do wanna do though, firstly, is just share a couple of things that are upcoming and then we'll kind of get more into that. So um, I know that uh, Cameron and Kenzie had mentioned before, um, we do have that OSHA construction for, or OSHA 10 for construction, uh, that's tomorrow and the next day. Um, and then we have the next OSHA 10 for general industry, right? So those are, and that one is coming up in October. Uh, I also put the one that is in December. So um, I do want to mention 
Um, if those dates aren't something that worked for you, or if you need um, additional resources, or if you have any questions, like do I do construction or general industry, Cameron is really good about getting back to you. Um, I know I somebody had asked about a, an additional construction OSHA tip for construction before the end of the year. If we get those requests, um, we um, we do our best to accommodate that. And and there a lot of times there's other people looking for those as well. So I my my point is don't have hesitate to reach out to Cameron if you don't, um, or me, if you don't see that OSHA 10 and you need it before the end of the year and this doesn't work for you. Um, and then Kenzie also had mentioned the first aid CPR and AED course, which is a member benefit class. Um, she's got that coming up this month on the 20th. Um, we've got one on October 19th, uh, September 30th, and December 15th. So um, again, this is just a, it's just such a good class, covers, covers those basics. Um, I, I really recommend that just everybody goes through that one. Uh, so if you haven't taken advantage of that benefit um, or you want to bring someone else or send somebody else, um, use your, your discount. We definitely encourage that. Um, and then again, one that I um, always like to kind of promote and remind people of, um, we have a couple months before December. Uh, so get this on your calendar if you haven't taken it yet. Um, safety management systems, uh, strategies for businesses. Um, this is such a great class. It's very collaborative um, and you can kind of drill down to some specifics and get some amazing ideas. Um, it's a great class for if you're kind of new to safety or even if you've been you know, around for years and years and years, but uh, maybe need some extra validation or just to, to double check or, or just get a fresh perspective, right? Um, some new ideas. So excellent class that I, I strongly recommend. And since it's not till December, there's time to get it on your calendar, make sure you're registered for it. Okay, so um, next month, our Start With Safety is actually gonna be on the 4th. Uh, we'll be talking about um, hearing protection, um, super important, obviously, and then uh, teen driving. Um, that impacts everybody, even if you're not a parent of a teen. Uh, we share the roads with teens. Uh, your, your drivers, your employees share the roads with teens. Um, it's always good to just get more uh, information, more awareness. So that's what we'll be talking about in October. Um, in November, we're going to talk about um, network and cybersecurity. Um, we had someone from, they were actually from kind of the Department of Health, but he's since, since changed jobs. So um, uh, but he still is willing to come. We're just confirming everything. However, either way, we will find we will have um, just a little update for you or a webinar about cybersecurity. Um, I know that some of even our member organizations have gone through some some hacking or some some cyber issues. And and I've recently attended a, a little course and, and learned more about some of the things that we can do um, that you wouldn't even think of to just help keep our networks and our, our, our information secure, um, right? So um, definitely something to, to just be aware of. So plan on joining us for uh, the cybersecurity uh, Start With Safety in November. And then in December, uh, we are going to talk a little bit about, about mining. It's National Miners Day, and we are going to, to honor that and then talk about safety um, kind of as it relates to mining. Um, that is a big part of, of our Utah industry where, you know, we started, we have a huge, huge mine in Utah. It's a big deal. And we've learned so much uh, from the mining industry. So even if you are not a miner or you don't necessarily think you have a whole lot to do with the mining industry, there are some amazing safety lessons um, learned in that, um, in that area that are applicable all the way around. So I encourage you to put that one on your calendar as well. Okay, so next up, um, for tools and resources for members, just a couple of save the dates and reminders, um, things I just wanted to update you and discuss. Um, so we had, as Nicole mentioned, we had our our 2021 annual safety awards. And um, we, we hosted that at the, at the Capitol, the Utah State Capitol, um, and we streamed that and it was recorded. So we encourage you to watch it. Um, we had an amazing guest speaker. We had um, Rosie Rivera, who is the Salt Lake County Sheriff. And she's also the CEO of Unified Police. Um, so if you haven't ever seen her speak or if you haven't heard her story um, or heard any of her messages, this is a great place to, to check that out. Um, it was really enlightening and we all kind of learned a lot about what it takes to keep 
um, the public safe and, and how they can run those businesses and organizations. So um, very interesting. And then we also were able to award 119 um, awards that were just well-deserved. And it was just an amazing time to be able to uh, take a minute and honor some of the things that that um, we've been able to accomplish. Uh, it's been, I mean, it goes without saying what, a, what, what crazy times we are living in and how much um, each of our jobs that have just changed over the past few years. So to be able to kind of take a beat and, and honor those um, that just continue to work so hard uh, to keep those around them safe. It, it was just a great experience. And I think we all enjoyed it and, and felt like it turned out well. So please, uh, if you haven't had a chance to check it out, um, go ahead and watch that. Um, kind of on that topic, I, I didn't mention before, but um, I will share links to all of these resources. I've got the email actually all typed up and ready to go. Um, so as soon as I get the, the update that this the webinar was recorded in Zoom. Um, I'll throw it in YouTube and then I will send all those links out to you. So um, so if you do want to watch that and you're, you're like, oh, great, I'd love to see it. How do I do that? Um, just hang on just a minute and we will get that, that email out to you with those links uh, shortly. You can also visit our website um, or any of our social media pages and that's, it's, it's posted there if you don't want to, you don't want to wait. It's very exciting. So I, I wouldn't blame you. Okay. Um, I want to mention, um, and I know I mentioned it last month, and we we had the, we tweaked the date just a little to to hopefully include some more. But we have our our membership appreciation event coming up, and it's going to be Friday, October first. So, um, what um, what Crossy Ranch is is, is kind of like if. Uh, if you've never been there or you don't know about it, it's it's a pumpkin patch and a corn maze and a um, you know sunflower garden and a petting zoo and all of that kind of combined into one. And it's kind of just hidden right up here in North Salt Lake. Um, but it's an outdoor event, and we just are been trying really hard to do something to just show our members that we appreciate them. So we're looking forward to this. Um, get that date on your calendar, and you'll see some more information uh, more information on that soon. Um, another date that we would like for you to remember um, and mark on your calendars is March 30th and 31st, 2022. That is when we are hoping to do our, um, well, hoping that's when we're going to do our Utah Safety Conference and Expo. Um, we will do um, everything in our power to make sure it's a safe experience, how, however that looks, but um, we, are, we are committed to providing a safe um, conference and permitting per committed to providing uh, a conference for 2022. So um, be, be on the lookout uh, for some more details, uh, but make sure you get that in your calendar and it's part of your planning process. Okay, um, one more thing on this slide before I move to the next. Um, didn't throw it on here, but I will make sure it's in the wrap up. Um, we do have our WISH Award event coming up in December, and that will be December 15th. Now the WISH Award is something um, that the Women in Safety Organization presents every year. Now, Women in Safety is part of the Utah Safety Council. It's one of our, um, our programs, and we do a Women in Safety and Health or WISH Award every year. So um, I'm going to attach that nomination form uh, to the email and I'll put that date in there as well. Um, but if you wouldn't mind taking a look at that and maybe considering nominating uh, a woman in safety or a woman not in safety, but has made a difference or an impact in safety, um, we would appreciate that. We'd like to take the opportunity to, to honor them. Uh, so we will share that um, and hope that you take the time to look at it and, and submit somebody. Okay, um, if you wanna to go to the next slide, um, I always like to just remind everybody about our, our streaming resources. Um, I like this and we call it streaming, but it is so much more. Um, they come with quizzes, user guides, all sorts of stuff. And you can, you can kind of drill down. It's over 2,500 different titles, English, Spanish, um, lots of topics and ways to drill down. I was just looking at some of the driving resources in this in the streaming site this morning before Start With Safety. And there was even a video in there just talking specifically about 
distractions um, in the workplace when you're driving at work, right? So we all drive um, a lot, most of us drive every day, um, but when you're driving on the job, there's a whole new set of distractions, things you need to be aware of, um, all that kind of stuff. So um, there's, you know, I'm always excited to share more and more resources, anything that you can do to keep awareness and keep conversations going, I think is important. So um, don't forget the streaming site. Um, if you wanna go to the next slide, Cameron, for me. Okay, and then here is kind of where it's at. We um, Rick was was so great and shared some of the the things that that can happen to us and occupant protection and seat belts and and we I think we get it right. We we know it's important. Um, so what we want to do is take his information, share that with employees, make sure that that they understand those messages. But we want to make sure as safety managers we have our resources in place. We have a seatbelt policy. We are um, sharing information. We are communicating what's expected with our employees, um, how important seatbelts are um, when, they're, when they're driving at work and at home. So, so I wanted to include this. So I'll include this link um, in the email wrap up, but on our Utah Safety Council webpage, if you select defensive driving and kind of scroll down about halfway, um, you can see this little traffic safety resource. So this is a picture of just what it looks like when you go to our website, kind of the picture on the left. Um, if that first arrow on the top is pointing to defensive driving, um, that you click on that and then kind of scroll, see that where it says traffic safety resources, that um, there is where you would want to to click and then you'll find all those safety belt resources, aggressive driving resources. Um, we did check and make sure to make sure all of those things working and the sample seat belt policy um, was not where leading where it was supposed to go. So we'll include that and we will update that. Nicole and I discussed that this morning. We'll make sure we have a good resource for you there. Um, so I will include this in the email, but please make sure you take the information that you learned um, from Rick today, um, that impact. And while you're thinking about it, um, check out some of these resources and make a plan as to what you can do to kind of augment, augment that and take that awareness and take it to the next level for your, for your team and for um, your safety program. Okay, so again, I just want to quickly thank Rick um, and thank Nicole for putting, putting this all together. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining us. Um, I appreciate everybody's attendance and our feedback and follow-up. Um, I know we've gotten some, some great email responses when we send out our, our messages. So we do hear you and we appreciate, we appreciate that and we appreciate your engagement. So um, please watch for our update uh, later today. As soon as that comes in, I will get that out to you and don't hesitate to reach out. Um, thanks again for starting this month with safety and we will talk to you soon. See you next month.